Well, hello. Hello, hello. Hi, Dave. Thank you, Kiri. Good evening to you. Oh, I'm glad you guys are doing okay. <clears throat> Live has been interesting lately. What do you mean by interesting with quotes? <laughs> is it like, oh boy, or has it been helpful? Hey, you guys, to my peeps here. So good to see you. Kiri, how are you healing? How are things going with your, um, was your arm right? Um, so anyway, and have you been able to get a truck yet? I think the heat has, the intense heat has broken, right? I mean, you're still like in the, um, oh, life, <laughs> not life. Okay. Oh, life has been interesting. Okay. Well, Lynn, hello. Good evening to you. Are you doing much better? Oh, good. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, still, when I was setting up my live, I they've kind of changed the... Um, to add things again and so I wasn't really sure so you guys might be interrupted let me know when they interrupt and when things kind of show in that way I need to turn there we go that's better um so that so that I know how to reset it or something like that Grammy Karen hello I haven't seen you for a while oh, oh let's hope Alicia, good evening to you. Very, very good to see everybody. Um, I know I was looking at the the weather earlier today, and it looked like you guys were like in the 90s, but um, you know, there's a couple hurricanes out there. So uh, traveling on Monday evenings. Okay, so I assume that's for work then, right? So, yes, I did see that. Alicia, that Lee was going to like hit the, uh, the Northeast up there. And so, um, so <laughs> Dave, the Vermont, New Hampshire, that's been, uh, saturated with rain may end up getting a whole bunch more. It looks like. So, um, if i uh, working remotely all week, so, oh, that's so great. I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> Um, yeah, we've, we've finally turned mild. So last week, um, you know, wasn't able to go live, but that day it was, was it that day? It was still in the hundreds. <laughs> it was like, it was a hundred degrees for a couple days, two or three days or something. And, um, then a front came through and we've been cool. I mean, like upper sixties, low seventies for the highs. And our lows have been getting down even to like the low 40s. So it's like fall type of weather. So right now uh, it's 72, it looks like. Tomorrow's high is 65. So, um, ooh, we hit 79 on Thursday. <laughs> but then it's just 60s and low 70s and stuff but so we have actually yeah some very um very nice temps going through very very nice we still haven't gotten the rain that we need though uh, a couple times we've gotten some sprinkles but that's about it but we're just so dry so dry um you got three inches of rain the other night oh my goodness oh wow that's a lot of work to build that back up again, isn't it? Do you, is it just all gravel or do you need to bring rock in or, um, which I know is expensive and a chore <laughs> and, uh, Oh, Grammy Karen. That's so sweet. Been humid again for weeks here. So done with already. Yeah. Temps. We've been, um, we're now pretty dry, I think. Let me see what it says. So right now we're at 48% humidity, which is nice. That's nice. When it gets into the anything over 60, that's uncomfortable <laughs> for the percentage. Yesterday you got almost half inch of rain. Oh, 
She got almost four inches. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Yeah, when it's so dry for so long, the the rain just runs right off. There's nothing there to saturate it, right? Did you first ripe strawberry? Oh my goodness. Yeah, strawberries don't do well in the super heat. That's for sure. It's gravel. You had a three-year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lots of shoveling. Christy, hello. You've got leaves falling. Yeah, my um, my birch trees in the front of the house. They've been they've been letting go of their leaves because it's so dry, and I haven't. I think I need to dig a new well. <sighs> Just, you know, just when you think you're getting everything situated and set, um, it's a price ticket I don't want. <laughs> I don't look forward to. Oh, man. But my, um, I don't, I don't have enough water pressure to run the sprinkler. So I haven't been able to water my trees or my lawn or anything like that. Um, when I water my garden, you know, I've got a hose wand that kind of is like the, like a shower type of thing. Um, it'll run for like five, six minutes, and then then it'll just fade right off. And, I've, and if I turn the faucet off outside for like five minutes, then I can go back to it and the pressure's back and it'll go for another five to seven minutes and then, and then just wane. So I'm waiting, I have a well guy supposed to come out and look at everything because I don't know if it's a pressure tank problem if it's a well pump problem or if it's the well itself that's a problem um we've been so dry and I'm surrounded by fields you know um agricultural fields and so they they have um their their irrigators running all the time and so you know it just drains the aquifer here in town and uh, it's, so it's pretty, pretty hard. So your ground is so crispy, no water will soak. It. Yeah. Um, oh, Carrie, I'm so sorry. You have a hard time getting anything to just to last. My well is 77 feet, I believe is what it is. So it's not a shallow well, but um, my neighbor across the street, had to put in a new well last week or last year. And he said, I think his is like 125 now or something like that, 130. So, um, but, well, that's what I was wondering too, if it's a pressure tank. Um, I mean, that could, it's, when did I get a new pressure tank? Um, hmm. 2003, I think. So or maybe it's been since then. And maybe to get a new one seven years ago. So it's at least seven years old. Um, hey, Eli, good evening. Your well is 420 feet. Yeah. Well, you guys need to go that deep down there. Absolutely. If I went that deep, I'd be, <laughs> I mean, we're surrounded by lakes. So uh, is we don't have to go too deep to hit the water level, that's for sure. <clears throat> um, 375, oh my goodness. Yes, it does get very spendy. Hi, Caitlin, good evening to you. Um, yeah, so it's been, um, yeah, like I say, a little cooler and dry. Um, been harvesting beans. I'm still harvesting beans. Now, um, you know, I've got my one, <clears throat> excuse me, four by six bed. That's all the Royal Burgundy beans. And those have been doing great. That they are, um, those from MI Gardener. And they've been doing, um, like, they're, they've been disease resistant. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know what's wrong here. Overall, pretty well pest resistant. Um, I only have a few few leaves with some holes in them and stuff, and they're still um, 
I mean, I've got grasshoppers and cabbage moth and stuff like that. And they just have been kind of leaving it alone. So, um, and they are just great producers. They're still putting out blossoms. And I've been uh, harvesting for a solid six weeks, I think now. And um, so I just, I just put up another six or seven pints yesterday. So um, yeah, they're still, still growing, still going like crazy. Um, which I'll just, <laughs> you know, at some point you just like, okay, I've got enough beans and you just pull the plants up, but there's so many beans left on there and I'll just keep going with them. Um, if they get down to like, the, there's only one little bean on a plant and there's no blossoms, you know, then I'll pull them up. But, um, oh, wow, Eli, it's come to that. Well, good luck with that. I'll be praying for you. Kathy, hello. Welcome. Grasshoppers, <laughs> you have happy ducks. I'm sure you do. Um so, so yeah, so the beans I did pull, now all the ones that are on the, my real long skinny beds that were on the north side near the fence, they're the one by eights. And I just thrown in like um, leftover seeds in those beds. And so I had a mix of green, yellow, um, dragon tongue, and stuff like that. They were, so anyway, they, they were all um, just kind of, coming to their end. So I just pulled off what I could and I pulled those plants. So those were, those are pretty much done, but the purple ones, they just keep going. Oh man, I was gonna, okay. <clears throat> I'll take you guys with me. Road trip. Cause I, I meant to bring these out and show you, but I had so much work going on up until one minute before this that it was like answering phone calls and texts and stuff. And so you're getting a little tour of my house here. Um, okay. Let me get these out of here. I'm putting things out of the refrigerator because I wanted to show you. They're just so beautiful. So, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So, okay, back to my office. Oh, and there's my cabinets. See those? Woo! Went up last week. I got them all filled. And it's so nice to have this place organized. So good. So, a stroll, a cattle land. I like that. That's good. Um, you're buffering. Carrie, it was probably me moving around. <laughs> so anyway, I pulled my carrots. And I didn't plant that many of them. But they are, and I don't even remember what they were called. But they're all basically purple carrots. And they're just, I mean, they're not big. But they sure were fun to, for, to plant. But I, so... I took almost one bag and cut them up. And this is what they look like inside. The beautiful orange inside and that purple on the outside. Aren't those pretty? So these are all in the refrigerator for just eating, just eating on. And so um, so I'll have the, and I have I have more other than these. But um, let me see, I can pull one out and show you guys. So they're not all that big but they, uh, they turned out fun. And it sure is fun to have like these on my plate, you know? And so it was, uh, got those all pulled. When did I do those? Yesterday. Yesterday. And then cut them up and cleaned them, cut them up. And so I'm not going to can any. Um, not all that fond of my canned carrots because they're just, you know, they're all, they, they're just soft and mushy and stuff. And I really do like to have them fresh. Um, so, or just eat them raw, you know? So anyway, so fun. Isn't that great? <clears throat> so they're just in water right now in the cold. 
in the refrigerator. So, uh, um, kept buffering. Oh, hopefully it'll work okay for you now, Carrie. I wonder if my my movement around may have been may have kicked that off for you or something. So, but yes. So I got those all all um, picked. I picked a few more peppers, and they're all purple ones. And, um, so, and yes, they are ripe, Eli. They, they start out green when they're little and then they turn purple when they're still small and they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So I don't remember what the name of them was. I, I got those plants at the store, <laughs> but anyway, so I'm growing a lot of purple things this year. So purple beans, purple carrots and purple peppers um, I don't know. It's a purple year, I guess. So I just wanted something a little different. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Caitlin, that you're not feeling well. Hopefully you'll get feeling better, sweetie. Um, so what else was I digging up? So green onions, those are coming. They're um, still a little bit on the small side, but I can use them. So I'm getting those and pulling a few at a time and bringing them in to cut them up for food and stuff. Um, getting a few zucchini. Uh, didn't do, do all that well, but, you know, uh, enough. So um, anyway, you've done some purple peppers. They're fun. Yes. What's so nice is that you can see things so easily in the plants. And it's really, um, I like it. And they seem to be... Um, more pest resistant, really. Um, I don't know. They, I don't know if bugs just don't go for the purple ones or something. I don't know, but they, uh, they're doing pretty well. So thank you, Alicia. Hey, Patty. Hello. Yeah. These, these, uh, I don't know if you saw these Patty, but this is my, my carrots. The purple in the orange is just so gorgeous inside too. Um, you watched a video of the British guy made purple jam from purple forge berries. Wow. Nice. That's so cool. Very, very cool. So yeah. So in the garden I have, uh, what do I have left? Herbs, basil, mint, uh, lemon balm is coming up like crazy. Um, my Swiss chard is just starting to grow. It's about six inches tall. <laughs> it took a while. It's been in there for three months. Um, I think it was just too hot for it to grow. Probably likes this cooler weather. And um, so I got beans. Yeah. The strawberry plants, of course. I don't have any strawberries with them because they're June bearings. Um, yeah, the herbs, peppers, onions. That's about it all that's left in there so I know <laughs> I know Eli I just have too short of a growing season for them to ripen otherwise but these purple ones are ripening so they're great some tomatoes eggplants jalapeno peppers cukes squashes beans are going to seed okay um, yeah so Kind of, kind of fun. Um, I think that was all of my news right now. I have a crazy schedule these next couple of weeks. Oh my goodness, it's just nuts. So trying to trying to not get overwhelmed and hyperventilate at the things that I need to get finished, <laughs> and just try to plug away at one thing at a time. But uh, it's it's crazy, crazy schedule. Um, so we're going to cover the other B vitamins. I was, you know, just kind of started to take one vitamin at a time, but it was like, by the time we get through all the Bs, <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be so bored of this. And then you guys will be just like, oh, come on, another B. So I'm just going to do all the rest of the Bs. The B12 is like the biggest one, uh, or most common, I should say. And, um, so we covered that last time. So this time I'm going to just do all the rest. There are eight B vitamins in all. 
And so, um, pouring. Oh, okay. No problem, Dave. We get in the rain. Nice. Kathy, you said you have tomatoes coming out. <laughs> they have we. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, oh, no worries, Curie. You're doing great. You're doing great. So, um, let me see. Try to, uh, I want to make sure, because I know Dave was talking about possibly being deficient in his bees. So, um, I just want to make sure he can hear it all too. But um, so B vitamins actually are important for making sure the body's cells are functioning properly. They help the body convert food into energy. That's your metabolism. So for those of us with low metabolisms, maybe we need to look closer at getting more B into our diets and everything. Um, they also create new blood cells. They maintain healthy skin cells, brain cells, and other body tissues. <laughs> I know Patty, right? Oh, Howie, hello. Um, <clears throat> so you're going, okay, you know, you hear about you look at like a cereal box or something and it's like all these things on here, all the bees and everything. All It's like, okay, whatever. Well, you know, they have to add all of those things into kids cereals because, you know, kids don't eat anything else. And the cereal itself is so unhealthy. So let's like fortify it. I <laughs> put all this stuff in there. But what I'm trying to um, cover with this is like, okay, so you might know that you're, low in, you know, one of a vitamin here or there. It's like, what can you grow in your garden to help you with that so that you don't have to um, necessarily, you know, um, go and load up on a lot of supplements or do this or that. So, um, or at a time where we can't get a hold of them, you know, different things. So uh, your dad got super sick with a vitamin B deficiency caused by caused by gluten. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I I um, really need to stay away from gluten. I mean, I can have a little bit here and there, but um, when did I first go off his butt? Eight or nine years ago, I think. Then I went gluten free, and I had to stay seriously away from it for a full year. And then I was able to incorporate a little bit back in, but, um, so eggs, meat and fish. Yep. There's a lot on that. So there are eight types of B vitamins and each one has its own function. So you've had B1, B2, B3, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 12. Why they skip certain numbers, I have no idea, but um, this is what it is. So the first one, um, oh, and and all together they're called vitamin B complex. So you hear about that, you know, complex vitamin B, um, you know, whatever complex B vitamins. Um, so anyway, we're just going to kind of um, parse them out a little bit. So the B vitamins often occur together in the same foods, and many people can get enough B vitamins by eating a variety of nutrient-dense foods. The problem is most of the food in the grocery store isn't nutrient-dense, so it's like you're growing your own or raising your own or whatever. I think I'm going to sneeze, so excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, an ad. Ugh. Okay. So true, Christy. Yep. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Dave. So, um, but there's some people who struggle to meet their daily needs of B vitamins. And then it's like, okay, then you can get supplements and everything. But kind of, again, like I'll cover everything, but I want you to know what it is you can grow that's going to help you here. Um, 
so many people or people may develop B vitamin deficiencies if they do not get enough of the vitamins from their diet or supplements. They may also have a deficiency if their body cannot absorb nutrients properly or if their body eliminates too much of them due to certain health conditions or medications. Um, I imagine if you're like on a diuretic, that's going to be flushing a lot of things out of your system um, that go along with the extra fluid and stuff that, that you're going to have to be careful of and make sure that you have enough, um, you know, things in there. So let me see. I don't know. It's my carrots. <laughs> um, so in the uh, description below, I have a link for the uh, website that I'm getting all this information from, and it gives you um, the daily values that you should have for all this. I find that most of the times they're pretty low. Um, but I think, again, to adjust them according to your medical conditions, according to um, your body mass, according to your particular diet, and, um, you know, maybe make sure you always check with your doctor when you're starting to increase one so that they don't, um, if you're on other medication, that it doesn't um, fight that or, you know, make your medication <clears throat> um null and void or whatever so you just had an ad to hi donna sorry guys about the ads i don't know they they just yeah they throw them in the middle there um okay so b1 is thiamine so you've heard about that thiamine is vitamin b1 um the your heart, liver, kidney, and brain all contain high amounts of thiamine. The body needs it for breaking down sugar, the carbohydrate molecules from food. So it breaks down the carbs. It creates certain neurotransmitters, which are your brain, brain chemicals, helps to produce fatty acids and synthesizes certain hormones. So your B1. Um, the foods you can grow with um, that would be high in B, B1 are acorn squash, legumes like black beans and soybeans, um, any other seeds and nuts that you're able to grow like sunflower seeds, almonds, different other nuts if you have nut trees and stuff like that. Um, the other things that you can <laughs> harvest out there is pork, trout, and mussels are really high in B1. So um, coconut to salmon will have B12. Yep. Yeah, we covered B12 uh, two weeks ago. So that would be, yeah, acorn squash. So acorn squash has a lot of the B vitamins in there. So um you know, that's a, a good, good winter squash to have when you can't get some of these other things. Um, exactly, Christy. It really is blessed for that. Hey, Deb. Hi. How are you doing? So some of the deficiency is not common in the United States because we have fortified grains and breads, cereal, pasta, all this stuff we put the extra vitamins into them. Um, but you also wonder what else they're putting into them, right? <laughs> so, so it's not common in the United States. However, certain groups of people may not get enough thiamine, including those with alcohol dependence, older adults, those with HIV or AIDS, those with diabetes, those who have heart failure, and those who have had bariatric surgery. Um, some of the symptoms you can get with a deficiency could be weight loss, little or no appetite, memory problems or confusion, heart problems, tingling and numbness in the hands and feet, loss of muscle mass, and poor reflexes. So um, if you if some of these just like, wow, yeah, that's me, you know, just think about, checking into it, look into it, talk with your doctor. It's like, okay, I want to increase my B vitamins. What should we do? So um, 
and then also get a really, you know, if um, if you're going to go the supplement route, make sure that you get a good one in that way. So you've been eating a lot of nuts lately, mostly almonds, walnuts, melt chocolate chips on the nuts. Oh, yeah, for chocolate bark. You're doing the holiday thing a little bit early there, Kiri. <laughs> Um, so good to be here with you and hearing this good. Oh, thank you. Do pasture irrigation chores as you listen. Yeah, you know, there's so many things that we could, we might be getting diagnosed for some other diseases when it's just a simple vitamin deficiency of some sort, you know, and, and so that might be the the um the first line of defense basically that we should look at is are we getting our vitamins are we getting our nutrients that we need rather than thinking oh man i've got this disease and that disease and i've got this so you know we're we're i think most doctors are assuming that we are getting our full um a full load of vitamins every day from our diet and from any supplements or anything. And so, um, you know, I think there's, I think, I don't know what, I can't find the word right now, but I think there's, they're, they're looking beyond where a lot, sometimes beyond what there should be. Um, so anyway, the, um, alcohol dependence can also cause a person to develop a thiamine deficiency. It can cause a different syndrome. It's called Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, which may result in tingling and numbness in the hands and feet, memory loss and confusion. Um, so anyway, all right, so that's B1. B2 is riboflavin. I always thought that word was kind of cool. Riboflavin is essential for energy production, helping the body break down fats, drugs, and steroid hormones, converting tryptophan into niacin, which is your B3, and that'll be the next one we look at, um, converting vitamin B6 into a coenzyme that the body needs. So really when they talk about our B-complex vitamins, all of these really need to work together. They interact and you need to have enough of each one of them for the other one to fully function within your body and to be able to absorb and to break down and do all the things that it needs to do. So, oh, thanks, Howie, for coming. Take care. You had a severe D3 deficiency. Doctors didn't test it, wanted to send me to. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, they do. You know, and it's, and again, like I said, the, I think because over the last 60, 70 years, our, the nutritional value of our food has depleted so much that we think we're getting what we need from our diets, but we're not. And so we're seeing all these deficiencies popping up that are um, giving us symptoms that, that, um, kind of mimic other diseases and other, you know, other things. And so, but I'm thinking that, okay, if you can just amp it up and take enough of this particular thing, you should be able to alleviate some of those symptoms. So, um, to your, Oh, Deb, yay. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's so great. I'm so excited for you. That I don't know, Alicia. I don't know enough about carpal tunnel. Um, maybe somebody else does. Uh, I, 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 Kiri, I hear you. Yep. Um, you know, Caitlin, I do not know. I am not a medical professional at all, honey. So all I'm doing is passing on this information about what you can grow and what can help here. So that I don't know. Um. Oh, that could be, that could be Donna. 
in the joint at your fist. Your pinky finger in the joint at your fist. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, arthritis does attack each of the joints there, so... Huh. Yeah. So, um, okay. So B12 or B2 again, riboflavin. Um, the foods that you can grow to help with B2 are mushrooms. Again, that, that, that was high in D. Um, so D3 was great with mushrooms. So here it is for B, B2. Um, Almonds, if you have an almond tree, that's a good one for that too. The other foods that are high in B2 are organ meats. So your livers, kidneys, different things like that. Again, they put fortified breakfast cereals. I think that that's probably the biggest, I don't know, if you're a breakfast cereal lover, that's great. And I did it for years too, but it's like there's there's just no there's no real food in there. <laughs> so I don't know, but, um, oatmeal, yogurt and milk. So if you have a cow or, or uh, goats or something, yogurt and milk, that would be a rich in riboflavin. So, uh, riboflavin deficiency is rare, but may occur when a person has an endocrine disorder, such as thyroid problems and certain other conditions. A person who is deficient in riboflavin may experience skin disorders, sores at the corners of the mouth, swelling of the mouth and throat, swollen cracked lips, hair loss, red itchy eyes. It's really interesting. You know, it, as I was studying through all this, it was like, wow, all of these things just from a vitamin, I'm low on a vitamin. And I was like, man, um, having, yes, acorn squash is very good. Um, <laughs> you must be low. <laughs> yeah, hair loss. Having a severe riboflavin deficiency can lead to anemia and cataracts. Being riboflavin deficient during pregnancy can create a higher risk of certain birth defects. So. Um, those people who are high at risk are those who follow a vegan diet or who do not consume dairy products. Athletes who do not eat meat, especially those who also do not eat dairy or other animal products. Women who are pregnant or lactating, especially those who do not consume meat or dairy products. You know, God, God gave us meat to eat. He told us to eat meat, you know, and have dairy and different things. And it's like, you know, when we say, oh, no, I'm not going to have any of that, then um, we are we are depriving our bodies of what we're supposed to have, right? So, yep. Um, yeah, allergies are different. So, um, you know, we just, so anyway. Okay, so niacin. So we've talked about thiamine and riboflavin. Okay, that's B1, B2. B3 is niacin. So the body converts niacin into a coenzyme called uh, nicotinamide. <laughs> Nicotinamide, uh, adenine, dinucleotide. NAD, that's what it is, NAD. NAD is a necessary part of more than 400 different enzyme reactions in the body, the highest of all vitamin-derived coenzymes. 400 different en enzyme reactions. You know, the more you study this, the more incredible our bodies are and the things that are so complex in there and and how one thing can affect so many things. I mean, it's just amazing. Amazing. <laughs> it sounds dangerous. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, you're right. They should, Christy. Absolutely. You got pure niacin in your house. Okay. 
Um, so these enzymes help with changing the energy in carbohydrates, fats, and proteins into a form the body can use. So it's like, hey, you take an extra B3 and have some pizza, and that's going to change into what you need, I guess. So it helps the um, metabolic processes in the body cells, helps communication among cells, and expression of DNA in cells. It sounds like it really, it really hits the cells. So, um, plant-based foods, things that you could grow would be nuts, legumes, uh, grains, if you have the room for that for grains. But um, those all contain a natural form of niacin. Um, but it's one that the body cannot use as easily. So uh, really the ones that the body can use easily are animal-based foods. So you have meat, poultry, and fish. Those are really high. So again, people who are um, vegetarian and vegan and stuff like that, they're missing out on so many vitamins. I can't. Um, be doing an apple cider vinegar hack in water with your body balance, see veggies and aloe. Oh, nice. Exactly, Kiri. Yep. Exactly. They just know how to, to diagnose diseases and uh, prescribe the medication for it and try to say, oh, you're going to heal from that. You know, and um, I, the last time I saw my doctor, it was like in July. And because um, I have a couple of autoimmune diseases and so on meds for those. And I just, I, I said, I have a philosophical question for you. It's like, why, why are these medications developed so that, They, they kind of give a false um, result almost. It, it, they get your body uh, kind of back into a normal uh, working spot. and then, But then once it's there, it gradually starts to, um, it doesn't allow your body to keep healing and doing different things like that. It it then uh, either backs off its, in its effectiveness or it, um, it, anyway, it creates a situation where you need more medicine and then you need more and you, you get that more and then things go back to normal. And then all of a sudden they're not all in normal anymore. And then you need more medicine. So it, it creates a system of getting you more and more and more and more meds and more dependent on it and different things. I said, why are they not created so that you can, it can go in there and help your body to, um, to recharge and, and to kind of regenerate in that way so that you can um, get your body back to healing itself. And so it can, it's like, why isn't it doing that? He goes, he said, follow the money. And that's where it was at. So it's like, yeah, exactly. So they, they just don't want you healthy. <laughs> I'm like, man, um, they just throw big farm at everything. Yeah. Education paid for by pharmaceutical. That's true. That's true. Um, she cured of multiple health issues, including on when she started eating just beef. Okay. A lion diet. Is that what it's called? A lion diet. I've heard other people, um, Jason at So the Land has, had to go on a strictly beef diet. A um, couple other people that I've heard about. Um, oh, that is great. That's so good. Um, yeah. Um, so some of the symptoms of niacin deficiency, which is B3, um, if you're getting, okay, if you're getting too little niacin, it could cause a niacin deficiency, obviously. Severe niacin deficiency leads to pellagra, 
which may cause brown discoloration on your skin exposed to sunlight, patches of skin with a rough appearance, a bright red tongue, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, headache, fatigue, depression. So possibly those are some things that can cause. If it goes untreated, it can lead to severe memory problems, behavioral changes, and suicidal behavior. It may also lead to an extreme loss of appetite or death. Uh, People at risk of niacin deficiency include those who have malnutrition, anorexia, alcohol use disorder, AIDS, inflammatory bowel disease, heart nut disease, carcinoid syndrome, which causes tumors to develop in the gastrointestinal tract. So you kind of make sure you keep your B3 going. And again, most of them are animal-based foods. So it's like, I was as I was reading through some of these, I was like, man, it's, you know, the, the lack of nutrition that's in our food out there and has many millions of people who are eating poorly and have all these vitamin deficiencies and they can leave to lead to a lot of um you know mental illnesses and different things like that and um all this stuff it's like you know it's not to say that a good part of our problem out there you know other than we're you know a post-christian society but uh, so many of the things out there could be um <laughs> could be just lack of nutrition. I was like, man, that would be uh a horrible illness. They have reduced a few of my mom's medicines if you had any full test proof of real food. Yes, yes. Problem real rural areas in nineteen hundreds. Oh, okay. Yep. So, I mean, it's great that they've identified a lot of these vitamins and everything and know what they do and everything, but it's up to each one of us to make sure that we're getting what we need. So, um, okay, vitamin B5 is pantothenic acid, and that's used for the necessary for the body to create new coenzymes, proteins, and fats. Red blood cells carry pantothenic acid throughout the body so it can use the nutrient in a variety of processes for energy and metabolism. Boy, we've heard those words before, haven't we? Those bees are powerful. So some of the foods you could grow to grow um, for B5 are shiitake mushrooms, sunflower seeds, and avocados. I, of course, in the north, we can't grow avocado, but some of you in the south, that might be. Some of the other foods it has there are beef liver <clears throat> and chicken, tuna. Um, oh, sunflower seeds also have, you know, they're they're high in a lot of the bees. So uh, if you grow sunflower seeds or sunflowers, make sure you collect the seeds. Um, <laughs> I tried it once a few years ago. I got some gorgeous heads and everything. And before I could finish drying them out, a mice got to them and stuff. And it was like, I was so upset. But anyway, um, well, you rode the city bus everywhere. People would feed crappy. T- yeah. Yeah. Whole foods, proper t- will give you every vitamin. Yep. Oh, Caitlin, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, you've got to check with your doctor to see what's going to work, hopefully. So you cook your first beef liver. Oh, wow. My mom, you liked it. Oh, that's good. My mom was one who, um, I don't know, she, she was probably raised on this, though, too. But she, she would, I don't know if it was like once a month or once, I think, it was, I don't think it was every week. But we would have... Um, liver and onions and bacon, you know, and it would be like, Oh, trying to get that liver down. But, um, I think it's also probably the way she cooked it too. But, um, you know, she would, she knew that we needed and let me just, 
These were foods that she loved, but it was like we couldn't quite get them. So, uh, use and abuse. <laughs> Lightly battered, fried in butter. There you go. Yep. And see, you got to. You got to do it. These were like shoe leather, you know, so it was not that pleasant. <laughs> um, the only other way that I ate liver was in a in Braunschweiger, which is like a pate, a liver pate. So that I liked. And uh, but anyway, uh, I don't know how good it was for you or not, but exactly what was in there. Okay, some of the symptoms of B5 deficiency or pantothenic acid. Um, so it's rare in the U.S. because it is plentiful in so many foods. However, it may affect people with severe malnutrition. In such cases, they are usually deficient in other nutrients as well. I don't know. I would say if you keep a steady diet of uh, McDonald's and Krispy Kremes and um, you know, Doritos and stuff like that, and that's all you eat, you're going to be vastly deficient in a lot of things. So the symptoms of deficiency include numbness and burning of the hands and feet, headache, irritability, restlessness, and poor sleep or lack of appetite. Um, all right. Your mom had a liver deficiency as a young mother and started cooking and eating living Okay. <laughs> liver the gallon of ketchup on it. Uh, liverwurst. Okay. So that's basically the same thing, right? A liverwurst as um, Braunschweiger. Liver and onions and butter. Hot, fast fry. I think that's the key in doing that uh, rather than um, I'm trying to think. She probably broiled it or baked it in the oven, you know, until it was just like, it was dry. And so, yeah. Uh, so vitamin B6 is our next one. So B6 or um, pyridox, pyridoxine, pyridoxine, yeah, I don't know. It pl pl plays a role in more than 100 enzyme reactions. The body needs vitamin B6 for amino acid metabolism. There's that word again. Breaking down carbs and fats, brain development, and immune function, B6. Um, so foods with some vitamin B6 that you could grow would be chickpeas and potatoes, so those are really high in B6. Other things that have B6 in, again, organ meats, uh, tuna, salmon, poultry. So there you've got your, your fish and your, uh, your beef, your fowl. <laughs> and, of course, fortified cereals. Okay. Some symptoms of vitamin B deficiency. Um so those deficiencies are linked to low levels of vitamin B12. So B12 we talked about two weeks ago. And if you're low on that, you may be low on the B6. So, um, you know, instead of taking, now there's, again, eight different vitamins in this complex. So instead of taking eight different supplements, it would make sense to take one um supplement unless you can tell that you're really low in one particular area but um liver steak and <laughs> uh liverwurst okay i just had to eat it at least she allowed the ketchup oh uh, i can believe it there's yeah some things um vitamin b6 deficiency may cause anemia Scaling on the lips, cracks at the corner of the mouth, swollen tongue, weakened immune system, confusion, depression. Uh, the people who are at risk for this have a kidney, a renal or kidney disease, have had a kidney transplant, celiac, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, 
autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis or alcohol dependence. So um, those are the high risk people. All right, vitamin B7. So it's biotin. Manufacturers add biotin to many hair, skin, and nail supplements. However, um, there's not enough, not sufficient evidence to conclude whether taking extra biotin helps with hair, skin, or nails. <laughs> so some people believe that biotin may help with psoriasis. But anyway, the human body needs biotin for breaking down fats, carbs, and protein, communication among the cells in the body, and regulation of the DNA. So foods with biotin that you could grow would be sunflower seeds. And that's all that you could grow. Everything else comes from um, animal-based foods. So organ, organ meats, eggs, salmon, pork, and beef. So um, you could make a, an omelet with all kinds of sunflower seeds in it. And you could, <laughs> if you're vegetarian, I guess. Uh, some symptoms of biotin deficiency include thinning of the hair. Hi, Dave and Eli, how are we doing there? Um, a scaly rash around eyes, nose, and mouth. Brittle nails, depression, fatigue. So it's a, a B7 biotin deficiency. So it is rare in the U.S., but the following groups may be more at risk. People with a metabolic disorder, uh, people with alcohol use disorder, women who are pregnant or lactating. So, um, you know, that's the... Pregnancy vitamins that you get, they it's like they focus high on iron and different things like that and getting your, um, you know, all that. So I never hear about the bees having to be really ratched up in that way. So anyway, you also put bacon with your liver and onions. Yeah, I've had that in there. Your chickens need to get there. <laughs> oh, no. Starting to go into the uh, um, the winter months here already, Kiri. You guys are too hot to do that. Has the heat affected the chickens in their lane? I never thought about that. Usually they just think it's the light. But I'm just wondering if the heat has affected them. Okay. So then we have vitamin B9, which is folate. Um, a natural form of vitamin B9 is called folate. Folic acid, which is present in fortified foods and some supplements, is a synthetic form of the vitamin. So folic acid is not the real thing. Because most people cannot take in enough leafy green vegetables for the levels needed in pregnancy, the Centers for Disease and Control and Prevention, uh, the one that we really know and trust, suggests that all women of reproductive age who wish to conceive take 400 micrograms of folic acid each day alongside eating a varied diet that contains folate. That was the thing that I was thinking about. Happy is linked to several birth defects. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so when a woman has enough, has high enough levels of folate, both before and during pregnancy, the baby has a lower risk of certain birth defects affecting the brain and spinal cord. Folate is also essential for DNA replication, metabolism of vitamins, and metabolism of amino acids. Oh, and proper cell division. That was on another page. So some of the foods that you can grow for folate um, are your dark green leafy vegetables, avocado, papaya, um, oranges, beans, and nuts. So there's some things you can grow with that. So if you're um, growing those and you're pregnant, you can, you know, just stock up on all of that stuff. 
But again, they said that it's hard to get enough um, of that. I mean, you'd have to be eating massive amounts. So there's also, you can get folate in beef liver. There's that liver again. Um, and eggs, beef liver and eggs. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's a B9 folate. Some of these symptoms of the deficiency um, would be weakness, headache, heart palpitations, irritability, sores on the tongue or the mouth, skin hair or nail changes. And I would say, you know, if there are things that you're seeing in here, I don't know if a regular blood test would check for um, for any of these deficiencies or if it has to be a very spe specified, um, you know, test that would not be covered by insurance or something. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, the FDA um, recommends that women increase the intake of folates again for pregnancy. Other groups who may need extra folate include people who have alcohol use disor disorder, celiac disease, conditions that interfere with nutrient absorption or IBD. You should not take more than 1000 megagrams of folic acid each day. Taking more than this can mask symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency. And um, so it can cause permanent nerve damage. So you want to make sure that you get enough of that. So we talked about B12 before. Um, and most of that is you can't really grow it. Um, it's mostly in clams, liver, beef liver, salmon, beef, and milk and yogurt. Uh, so it says most multi multivitamin supplements contain some of each B vitamin and many provide hundred percent or more of a person's daily needs. You know, when they, when they give that daily need type of thing, I'm thinking that again, it's for a particular person with a particular um, body mass, as well as diet and different things that they are assuming that you're eating all these other things. And so if you're taking that other supplement, it's like adding to a, a normal type of thing. But if you're not on that normal basis, you're going to be off, I think, and everything. So rabbit liver, oh, no, I don't know. Hi, Tracy. I didn't see you before. Um, you can't feel kind find kale, spinach, and lettuce seeds. Ooh, yeah, they're probably not out yet. Um, naturopaths can order a complete blood panel. Oh, good. Good to know, Patty. Show the details missed on standard blood panels in D and others. Oh, that is a great tip. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, daily needs are very subjective. So when you see a bottle and your vitamin that says, okay, you got 100% of this, and go, oh, okay, then I don't need to, I don't need to bother eating that other vegetable because that's covered in there, right? So, um, so anyway, um, most people have deficiencies and would benefit from a high dose B complex supplement. So B vitamins each have their own unique functions, but they depend upon one another for proper absorption and the best health benefits. Eating a healthful, varied diet will generally provide all the B vitamins a person needs. Um, anyway, does liver contain toxins since it filters them? Um, boy, I would say make sure that any, like any of your other meat, make sure that it is organic grass fed or something like that. I would, you know, that they, that they're not being, um, injected with all kinds of different, um, medicines and stuff like that. So I would, I would just check your source of, of the liver that you're getting, 
whether it's beef or chicken or or whatever it is. So I would, yeah, I would definitely check on that. So, all right, guys, it is after the hour. I went over, so it was so good to see you. Thank you for coming and for listening to me ramble on about this. And it was kind of like a whew, heavy, serious thing. But again, my gorgeous carrots, aren't they so pretty? If you can see them purple carrots and um it was fun so thanks and we will see you next week so take care god bless always have hope and y'all have an awesome week good night